Hey everybody, welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. We'll be live here uh, doing the show in just a few moments. To welcome everyone in, get those alerts coming in and firing before we, we dive deeper into today's show. Hope everyone is doing well. On this Tuesday, 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 March 8th. Today is uh, today's the Apple event. I always geek out about uh, Apple events. Yes, I'm an Apple fanboy. So today we will see, we will see, we will see, we will see an Apple event today at, uh, right after this show actually. Today on the show we're going to talk about, you know, if you're not ready yet to invest because maybe you're a little scared about it, you're scared about the process, you're thinking, okay, maybe it's not for me just yet. We're going to talk about some things you can do right now to kind of prepare yourself for it. Um, and kind of get your finances in order. We're going to talk about that on today's show, how to prepare for investing. Hope everyone is doing well. Let me know how you guys are doing in the chat. JR says, what am I looking forward to at the Apple event? I am looking forward to, because uh, I'm always like repositioning my studio and our and our whole workflow here and uh, video production and, uh, and all of that. Uh, and just writing, writing and, and images and graphics and, and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to, I, I really would love like a cinema display, like a new Apple display that's not $6,000, like their, their Pro Display XDR. Um, I would absolutely be interested in a, uh, a more consumer friendly display that perhaps could be powered by a few Mac minis or a Mac Mini that, uh, the new Mac Mini Studio. So there's rumors about a new Mac Studio, Mac Mini today, which might be called Mac Studio. And it would be, would have like multiple inputs, multiple ports, not quite a pro, whatchamacallit? Um, but uh, another one, uh, not like quite a, like a Mac Pro, but like a smaller version of that with multiple ports with like some new chipsets in it, so. I'm excited about that. We'll see if that's a possibility today. What about you guys? Good morning, Don Elliott. Good to see you. We're going to start the show here in a minute. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Striper 99. Good. Hello to you. Bill Perdue. Grim Skull is here. Good to see you. Lindsay. Nice to see you. So we're going to be talking about real estate investing. <clears throat> Everyone is doing well today. Again, today um, we're going to be talking about what to do if you're not ready to invest in real estate. Uh, let me know what questions you have. I think so, Jr. I mean, I you know, this is for a lot of people who maybe you still have some ducks in a row, and and some of this could be applicable certainly for you getting like lining up your next investment property. So maybe, I know you're beyond the point of being scared about it. <laughs> You've already done it, but it might be helpful to take you to the next level. Where 
Where's my... Welcome in, welcome in. Well, that's awesome. Is it, uh, and it's, uh, is it Louis or Luis? Make sure I'm saying your name right. Garcia. Exactly. That's what BlackRock does. All right, all right. Welcome into the Investing in Real Estate show. I'm Clayton Morris. So glad to have you here. Today, we're going to talk about five actionable steps that you can take when your goal is to invest in real estate. And look, you know, you might not be ready. Not everyone is ready right out of the gate. Some people need a lot more coaxing, a lot more education, and there are things that they need to get in line. You know, the real estate investing is, you might know this already, that real estate investing is the number one way to build wealth, but maybe you still have some ducks that you need to get in a row. Ducks are hard to put in a row. Have you ever seen ducks? Sometimes they do it themselves, but there's always like one duck that's, you know, scurrying off the side. So not everything is always in total alignment. Maybe a credit score is not where you need it to be. Maybe the financing isn't there. Maybe you can't identify the right market. Maybe you just don't know where to even start. It's not a bad place to be. It's, a, it's like, you know, it's a great to have a goal in mind, right? To put up a goal on your, on, um, up on your computer screen and then kind of be ready to go, like where you want to take things in the future. So let's map out how you can actually get there on today's show. So number one, the first thing you need to do is you need to have a solid and a comprehensive view of your overall finances. Once you do that, you're going to have a much better understanding of how long it will take you to start investing and buying properties. You know, you need to know, right, like where you're going to go. Where do you want to go? What's your roadmap? So what exactly does this mean? Well, I want you to carve out some time this week to start looking at all of your finances. Commit to creating a balance sheet every quarter. Calculate your freedom number. It's very, very simple to do. When you go to morrisinvest.com slash freedom, that again, that URL is morrisinvest.com slash freedom. We have a totally free download for you. It's a freedom cheat sheet. Very easy for you to uh, go through it and it'll leave no stone, un no stone unturned. Okay, what it's going to do is it's going to show you to look at your debts. It's gonna ha it's gonna make you question the things that you're spending money on every month. Again, this is a free download. You'd be crazy not to go and grab it for free. Three pages. Figure out your monthly expenses. What does your cash flow look like? Look into your retirement accounts. Okay, this is step one. Look in and see what you've got. Do you have an IRA sitting there? Do you have a self-directed account? Do you have some other financial vehicle that you forgot about? Some sort of a credit union account. Trust me, a lot of people have these and they don't even realize they can utilize them, that they could roll them over into a self-directed account or leverage against those particular accounts. I mean, consider your own home equity position. You know, are you living in a home right now that has equity that you could tap into before these interest rates start going up in the next few months? And even, you know, even then, interest rates are still historically low. But hey, you know, we know Jerome Powell is planning to raise interest rates. Like he's, he told us last week, that's going to happen. Okay, so if you're sitting there waiting to lock in loan prices right now, do it now. Start the process. Even going up 25 or 50 basis points, not a lot. But for the federal government, that's a pretty big deal right now for the Fed. Again, not a huge jump, but still it's something. And why not lock in some of these things now? I also want you to write down a few ways that you could actually purchase your first rental property. Just write them down. Okay, go through a list and think, okay, hmm, I've got this old IRA that I haven't touched in years. I have a 401k that I currently use. Um, can I use that? Yes, you can. You can borrow against it. Not withdraw, but borrow against it. What about my rich uncle? Um, yes, he's often talked to me about investments. Perhaps I could talk to him 
potentially about creating uh, a partnership, my uncle, where he would pay the down payment and he'll carry the note on a property. And endless ways to start thinking about how you're going to buy your first rental property, okay? When you're at this stage, you might still be a little nervous in the process. Number two, the second thing I want you to do is focus on financial empowerment. Now, we created a financial empowerment boot camp. Yes, we did, Natalie and I, and it's totally free. Yes, it took a, lot of, a long time, and it's free. We could charge a lot for it, but we don't. Again, just go to morrisinvest.com slash bootcamp. It's a 90-day plan. You're going to download this PDF, okay? You can treat it like a book. You can install it into iBooks or wherever you read, wherever you read books. You can bring it into your Kindle if you want. And week by week by week in this 90-day plan, we're going to help you take control of your finances. So in the boot camp, you're going to learn valuable information about liabilities and assets, okay? And we're going to challenge you to think differently about money. You know, because if you're sitting back on your hands right now saying, I'm not investing because I'm scared, I want you to start thinking differently about money. My God, I'd be more scared about relying on a paycheck and relying on a boss and a federal government for my retirement. Like that to me is way scarier than actually putting money into real estate or in you know, precious metals and things like that. No way. <laughs> I'm not sitting back. I'm not, I'd be nervous about that. Recently, we moved some investments around and we were sitting on some cash. And I was like, my God, I don't want to have cash. I want to have cash flow. I don't want to have a pile of money. I want to have a pile of properties that perform for me and produce monthly cash flow. Again, I want you to download our boot camp. It's totally free. I think you'll be totally surprised what you can accomplish in 90 days if you just commit to it. Trust me. So again, morrisinvest.com slash boot camp. Two things that are free today for you to download. All right, third on my list, I want you to invest in your learning before you're investing, okay? Before you get started, I want you to invest in the learning process. Education is power. If you aren't ready to invest with your dollars, the most important thing you can do is invest in your learning. Make learning about real estate investing a regular part of your life, whether it's listening to this show, reading real estate-related books, uh, just studying market conditions, you know, subscribe to Bloomberg.com. Uh, you know, that's one of the few like business websites that I actually pay for because I like what they do. I subscribe to the Financial Times, which is another financial newspaper. I subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. Um, there's a number of publications you su can subscribe to, but just take the time to sit down and learn about real estate investing as a regular part of your life. I remember when I was at the University of Pittsburgh, one of the things that I liked to do when I had sort of some downtime between classes was I would go over to the uh, Lawrence Hall. That was the name of the big hall where I would go. And there was a lunch area kind of up, upstairs in Lawrence Hall. And I would buy a Wall Street Journal. I was a poor college kid. But I knew because a professor of mine at the time, Professor Michael Jimenez, one of the most brilliant guys I've ever met in my life, changed my life. He said, how can you possibly know what's going on in the world if you don't read every day about what's going on in the world and understand what's happening? And I really took that to heart. I was like, you know, I think you're right about that. So I would, I, you know, pick your publication, right? Don't fall for some propaganda. But at the time, and I, I subscribed to the Wall Street Journal, I would buy it every day and I would read it cover to cover. He said, literally, sit there and read the front cover all the way to the end. And I would, even like the on page 20, like those weird, obscure stories about something that's happening in Guam. Read about it, read about it, read about it. It's the only way you're going to improve and make yourself more knowledgeable about the world and investing. Make learning about real estate investing a part of your day. Just do it. 30 minutes. That's all you need to do. There's so much information for you out there. Our podcasts, we have hundreds of YouTube videos right here on this channel for you to watch. We have audiobooks. There's webinars available everything, not just from me, but from lots of different sources. Find a medium that you can easily incorporate into your routine. For example, maybe you have a long commute. Maybe it makes sense to listen to podcasts instead of just listening to the morning zoo radio program, right? Buy, uh, buy some audiobooks. Listen to Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Buy Tom Wheelwright's amazing
helpful to have people around you that want to succeed with you. I challenge you to find at least one person to be your cheerleader in this process, someone you can talk to about what you've learned and how you plan to start investing. Very, very important. Someone says we're frozen here. And Alicia says we're frozen. Are we still frozen? Make sure we're... Are we okay, guys? We've... um, It's Restream. It's the software we're using. Honestly, so this, this company, Restream, is a software that we use for all of our streaming. They're actually located in, in Ukraine, of all places. So, um, okay. We're good now? Okay, thanks, Grim. Th- uh, thank you. Okay, we're good now. I'm going to start number four over again, okay? Let's make sure that, so we have a clean, everything's clean here. <clears throat> so number four on my list is find support. You know, when you have a big goal, it's always helpful to have people around you to want to help you succeed. You know, if you're trying to lose weight, right, and, you know, you've, you tell a spouse about this, then that spouse can provide some extra help and extra support, right? That's important. You need to surround yourself with people, especially if you have a big goal. Incorporate your family in this. You know, print out things you put around the house. That's what I did. I needed, I wanted to buy 12 rental properties. That was my goal when I started. And I put that freedom number up on everything. I put it on my computer screen. I put it on my refrigerator. I put it on our cork board in our kitchen when we lived in New Jersey. I made it my mission. I was like a dog with a bone that I was going to get to that goal. And you see that number constantly. And that means all of the things in your life start to align in that same direction. Well, fine. You need to find other humans, right? You cannot do this by yourself. It's incredibly helpful to have people around you that want to succeed. I challenge you to find at least one person in your life to be your cheerleader. I'm happy to be your cheerleader, but it needs to be someone you talk to on a regular basis. Someone you can talk to about what you've learned, how you plan to start investing, just sitting down over dinner and saying, hey, I learned about this amazing benefit with real estate as it relates to our taxes, honey. You wanna hear about how we can literally pay nothing in taxes? Wouldn't that be amazing dinner conversation? Really, you can do that? Yes, you can. (laughs) Yes, as a real estate investor, you shouldn't be paying any taxes. That's the benefit of owning rental properties if you do it correctly. You know, it's really powerful to have someone around you that you can bounce ideas off of. You know, if you don't have anyone in your personal circle that you can do this with, I would consider attending like a local real estate meetup. Find someone that you can keep advice with and and be held accountable. Meetups are a great way to do it. If you go to meetup.com, in your area, you're going to find three or four different real estate groups. Okay, they're going to... Uh, and I, I caution you, though, go to them. They might be virtual still at this point, given COVID and all that craziness. But once they're not, they'll, they usually meet like once a month. I know in New Jersey, I had three or four that were local to me. And I would go to all of them. And I became friends with all of these investors and, and bankers and carpenters and, uh, and, uh, and accountants. And I, I, one of the lawyers that we ended up hiring to work on a couple of our deals, like he, I met him there. His name was Adam. I met him at a, at a real estate meetup group. He became my real estate lawyer. Uh, so all of those people you can meet at these meetups, but I would caution you, make sure you, you surround yourself with more, uh, per, um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Successful people than you. Okay. Don't gravitate to the back of the room where the people aren't talking. They're not interacting with anyone. And frankly, they're losers. I'm just going to say it. Okay. They're people that don't want to ex- succeed. They want to continue staying in the spot that they are. They don't want to excel. So surround yourself with people that have 50 houses more than you do, that are more successful than you are. That's how you're going to learn. Surround yourself with those people, okay? Try to stay away from the people that are the naysayers, that will tell you can't do something, all of those things. Very, very important to avoid those people. Remember the, the old saying, you are the, you are the product of the five people you spend the most time with. Who are the five people that you spend the most time with in your life? Are they more successful than you? Are they more driven than you? Do they lift you up? Or are they losers? Think about it. I mean, just really think about it. If they're losers, you might need to change your crowd, you know? Number five on my list, book a call with us. One question we hear all the time is, what do I need to do, you know, in order to get ready for my, for my call? What do I need to do? What do I have to have in order before I schedule a call? And the answer is, we're happy to explain it to you on the phone. So if you don't know, 
and you're not sure like, oh my God, I don't know if my finances are this or this or that. That's okay. Just, we will help you for free. Just book a call with my team at Morris Invest, okay? The link is below. Just go to morrisinvest.com and we're happy to talk with prospective investors at any point in their journey, even if you never work with us. I mean, heck, we're only building 500 houses, single families and duplexes, so we can't help everybody. But in that way, for buying a property, we can help you in other ways. We can point you in the right direction. We can guide you on your journey. We can help you map out a, a, a financial roadmap for you. We can do all of that for free. That's what we're great at. So whether you think you want to invest by the end of the year or maybe in a few years, my team would be happy to chat about your options and how you can get started. That being said, we will send you some homework before your call. So when you go to our website, you go to morrisinvest.com. Let me bring it up here on the screen. Um, you're going to get a download. You're gonna, yes, you are. You're going to get a download that you're going to have to do and prepare before our phone call. Now, it's free, but you're going to have to do it, okay? So let me show you our website. So when you come here and you click on the book a call button, a little calendar will pop up, okay? And you pick the time that you want to book a call with us, and then you will get an email alert. And in that email, you will get a download, a PDF download, so that we are prepared for your phone call, okay? And that you are prepared for your phone call. It's going to go through a couple of key data points for you. So very, very important to do. So again, it's not a lot of homework but it's gonna require you to put down some key things on paper. But if you are dedicated, if you're driven, if you're serious about investing, this should be no problem at all for you, at all. So just schedule a free call with us today. Just go to morrisinvest.com. We're happy to help you in this process. What else would you add to this list of things to do when you're not ready to invest? Drop me a comment below. Let me know. Are there some things that we missed here? Are there some other things that you would put in place before you're ready to invest. Drop them below. Let me know here. What do you guys think? Anna Alicia, when are our when our when, it's so hard to say. Anna Alicia says, when are our new properties <laughs> going to be available? Let me put it up here on the screen. Uh, I love this. Bill Purdue says, I've lost a few friends um, doing this pro or going through this process. Yeah, why is my thing? Bill Purdue says, oh, here, let me, let me show you here what Bill says. I like this. Bill says, I lost a few friends along the way, but I'm progressing. They're still stuck in the rut. Got to look out for me, though. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Striper, who's booked a call with us, says, yeah, the call process is easy. There's no press, pressure whatsoever. Well, the, the, the key is we don't have to pressure anybody. Like, we're going to sell 500 homes this year, and we don't have to pressure anybody into anything. I don't want anyone to feel pressure about buying a, an investment property. You know, like makes no sense at all. Like we don't, there's no selling that needs to happen at all because it's a, it's a brand new construction property with a tenant moving in and already in place virtually at the same time as closing and a bank is putting up the money and financing the property. Uh, it's very important on our team that like there's no, we don't have any pressure on it because if it's not for you, it's not for you. You know, I don't want that at all. There's a lot of fish in the sea. There's, you know, 500 properties this year. Um, we don't have to, I don't want to twist anyone's arm for that at all. Uh, let's see. Louis says, it was very helpful to go through my numbers in detail on the phone with us. That's great. Exactly. It's very important. How are you going to know? Numbers don't lie, right? I mean, people... If if you don't if you're not looking at numbers, you can feel better about your retirement situation. You know, when I had a 401k and I was blind to retirement process, the you know, I just was like, "Hey, set it and forget it. I've got a 401k," right? And I didn't even know. Like I didn't know what my real numbers were looking like. I didn't know what I didn't look at it, I didn't see it. If you're not paying attention to it, um who's going to? Who's going to take care of your retirement for you? You've got to do it. Let's see here. Aaron says, once we close on our family house in May, I'll be giving you guys a call to go full speed on real estate. That's awesome. We'll be happy to help you. We're not going anywhere. Let's see. When, oh yeah, Annalisa wants to know when new properties are going to be available. Um, that's a good question. We're always rolling out our next batch of properties. Um, I haven't looked at our our 
our calendar uh, on the next batch yet for that. Do you guys know? Uh, Nicole, do you want to jump in on that? Yeah. Hopefully Nicole's here in the chat. She can answer that. Bill. Bill says... Clayton, you've always said write goals down. I write down the tiniest things and place them on fridge where I can see them every day. That's awesome. You're better than me, Bill. <laughs> um, you know, I've got, it's so funny. I spend the weekend, I go through my goals journal and I will write down and it's amazing what I write down gets done. It is unbelievable. And some of the stuff, like I don't look at it every day, you know, but when I've written it down and I kind of go back to it occasionally, I look every few weeks and I kind of go through my review period it's still, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm working towards that. I'm still on track. I'm still on track. It's the stuff you don't write down. It just floats away. Oh, Annalisa says, I am reading your book. I'm reading your book, How to Pay Off Your Mortgage in Five Years. That's awesome. Yeah, grab the blue cover, the newest version of it. Uh, there's a yellow cover, which is a few years old. The blue cover has the updated tax code information in it. So grab that version of it. Plus, we have an audible version. The audio version covers the newest material as well, if you get it on audiobook. Stan, yes. Um, Yes, our properties are available for investors this quarter. Um, and how many properties are available each quarter? Well, you can do them. I mean, don't pin me down on exact because it depends on when we get approval, uh, when permits are done, when... It depends on weather, <laughs> you know, we had, because a lot of our properties in West Texas, so we had some unseasonably difficult winter weather, um, so it depends. But, you know, we're building anywhere from 100, 100 just figure about 100, 125 properties a quarter is our goal. Single families and uh, and duplexes. Oh, I should add, oh, you got the Audible. I should add the spreadsheets on Audible. Yes, that is on our list. And in fact, we need to update that uh, spreadsheet. Um, so we should have the PDF in there that we can download right in the Audible. That's a very good point. I'm going to write that down as I'm talking about uh, as I'm talking about writing down goals. Well, I'm going to make sure that we get on that with the team to get that fixed. Uh, let's see. Dawn. Dawn asks, Dawn asks the funniest question I've ever heard. Dawn, I love you. Can anyone else answer in the chat for Dawn whether or not I'm going to build properties and our team is going to build properties in California? Can anyone else in the chat answer this question? I'm just going to let our chat, our audience here, answer the question for Dawn. And be nice. Don't be rude to Dawn. <laughs> Aunt Alicia says, hell no. No, Dawn. Dawn, never. <laughs> Lindsay says, never. Taxes are crazy, as Striper points out. Taxes are just one piece of the puzzle, right? Jennifer Cooper says, uh, I'm new to investing world based on Stan's question on available investor properties. How would I go about investing with you? Simple, just book a call with us, Jennifer. That's the first step. Just book a call and we'll kind of go through the process and learn about you and your goals and your finances and where you hope to go long term, five, 10 years from now. So that's just the basic. All you need to do is just go to our website, book a call here, click on the book a call button and, uh, Again, it's morrisinvest.com is the website. You can just learn about what we do. Like here's here's some of our new construction properties we got on our website here. You can check all of that out and see more about it. But the best thing, and what will happen is when you click on the book a call button, a little calendar will pop up um, based on your time zone and where you are. And uh, you go ahead and pick pick a time. And you just click on what time works for you. Pick a 30-minute 30 30 window. 
click that and then we put in your correct phone number though and put in your correct email address so that we can call you at that time. You'll receive a welcome email from us, so make sure it doesn't go to spam. And then uh, we'll, we'll call you at that time and then we can go over, we can have multiple calls. You know, With a lot of our clients, we, we have many, many calls with them over the course of multiple years. So this is not like a first one call and done uh, to, to develop that relationship, Jennifer. I hope that answers it for you. Um, let's see. So no, I mean, the answer is no on California. The reason we don't build in California is because it's one of the least landlord friendly states in the country. We only build in landlord friendly states with, you know, with expanding demographics. Okay. Um, so we do not build in California. Um, high crime, people leaving California. It's not landlord friendly. So the area that we mostly invest in right now where we're building our properties are in A-class A class school districts, okay, where the best school districts uh, with multiplicity of jobs, healthcare, universities, um, taxes are low, rent is great, uh, landlord friendly, very, very important. Okay, Texas is the number one landlord friendly state in the country. Number one in every category. So that's why we invest there. Business friendly. Just think about the, the people that are moving to Texas. We also invest in, in Tennessee and other, some other places. We have other markets coming online always, but our main focus has been West Texas because it's just phenomenal. It's boring. I mean, that's the other thing I love about it. It's got nice appreciation. It's boring, it's it's beautiful, but it's not flashy like Vegas or Miami or San Francisco or any place like that. It has great family growth, uh, great family area, shopping, business, job growth, low crime, low vacancy, boring, not flashy and crazy. And that's what I love to invest in. Are we going to invest in Ohio? Uh, no, I definitely studied Ohio. I've done projects in Ohio. There's, there's some things in Ohio with Ohio state laws. I'm not happy with plus the crime in a lot of Ohio areas is really high. Um, uh, you know, there's a lot of problems like in uh, Toledo, um, Cleveland. So the areas where you'd be looking, you know, Columbus has some, I used to live in Dayton, Ohio. So there are some, there are some, you know, Areas between Cincinnati and Dayton, um, like Miamisburg, that are you know that are that are interesting, um, but for job growth, okay, I want big job growth, and Ohio is not the answer for that. And also, uh, Ohio in a lot of areas has higher crime than I'm comfortable with. Plus, the weather. There's just a bunch of things that I'm not happy with when it comes to uh, comes to Ohio. Um, so, yeah. Nothing against it. I just, it, from an investing perspective, not my cup of tea. Not my cup of tea. Yes, in Texas, Luis, exactly. Uh, and Don, yeah, Ohio has low inventory. Uh, yeah, I mean, here's the thing with Ohio. You're not going to get the... Look, are you going to build property in Ohio? Okay, then where are you going to build, right? Okay, you're going to build in an area that has A-class neighborhoods or A-class school districts. Okay, where are you going to are you going to afford the land? Where's the land going to come from? Number two, uh, what are you what are you looking at for jobs? Okay, so do you just have the military base at Wright Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton? What else do you have? Okay, is Dayton College? Okay, what what else? You know, what, what other industries do you have that are moving there as a tax base? I just don't want to be in towns where there's like a one employer town or the hope of an employer coming. Yeah, maybe someday there's going to be an Amazon distribution center here. Great. Someday. What does it look like now? Are, are the schools in demand? Where does the rental bay? What is the what is the vacancy rate in these areas? And what is the overall crime and migration patterns? There's so many factors that go into this. So people throw out to me all the time, 
Do you invest in uh, California? What about uh, Iowa? What about this place? Again, we look at markets all the time. It has to hit certain criteria. And we have full videos here on the channel. I would encourage you to watch them where we go in deep about these criteria that we look for in different rental properties, uh, in different rental markets before we ever go in with our team. You know, our ground team at Sidira Wealth does an amazing job uh, on the, anal uh, the you know, analyzing the market space before we pull the trigger on any market. Dawn says, how do I feel about uh, waterfront properties? Sorry. Not clicking, not keeping these up here. What, what do, what are my thoughts on building? Uh, oops, sorry, I clicked on the wrong one. But Jennifer, I'll ask you that. What are your thoughts on building here in Charlotte? Are you already in North Carolina or planning on it? I have been here for almost seven years and it's grown tremendously. Uh, I've done quite a bit in, um, what's it called? Rock, Rocky Mount, um, that area. Um, but no, it's not an area that I'm actively, it's certainly on my analysis list. It's definitely been in our analysis list, but the rents are too cheap. So it's just not from like a cost benefit analysis. It's, and the job growth in certain areas where we would want to expand is not right there yet, but still a lot of good demographic data in North Carolina for sure, Jennifer. But again, we have full videos here on the channel about why investing in your own backyard is, you know, is probably not a good idea uh, unless you happen to live in some of the best rental markets in the country. Like, do you live in West Texas and there and OK, then you want to go. The bottom line is you're going to have to invest out of state. You're going to have to rely on a team of people. OK, you cannot do this yourself in your own backyard. So just get that out of your head. None of the homes I own are in my backyard. Not at all. So, you know, sit down with Robert Kiyosaki. I asked him one time, I said, you know, do you ever see your properties? He's like, no, <laughs> no, I don't. Like, I, I never see my properties. I don't need to be where they are. I want a team handling my properties. I don't want to touch them. I don't want a phone call about a hot water heater that needs a, a valve. Don't call me with that stuff, please. You know, is it a great place to live? Is it in a great school district? Is there a great tenant in my property? And am I taking great care of that pr property and the tenant? And is the property management team all over it? Great. Great. I'll file my taxes. Send me my, send me my rent checks. And I'll make sure you've got a great place to live and a great rental investment in my portfolio. I don't want to see it. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to have anything to do with it. I want to become a passive income investor. That's my goal. That's always been my goal. Don't create another job for yourselves. <laughs> Um, Annalisha, I've got uh, good stuff about commercial versus uh, commercial syndications versus rental properties. Um, yeah. So you can check that out here on the channel. Go a little deeper into my thoughts on that. In fact, I did a whole live stream on commercial versus uh, single family. Our, um, Star Peak Mining Sun. I haven't checked that today. I don't. I don't check that daily. I, you know, keep an eye on these uh, different mining companies. Look, these commodities companies right now. I mean, I'm telling you what what's happening in like lithium and nickel and I mean gold and silver and again precious metals. You know, and and real estate. I mean, these are the thing. These are the plays right now, guys. All you have to do is look at what's happening with oil. I mean, look at what's. Did you see the price of nickel overnight? Holy smokes! Did you see crude oil prices? We're heading towards three hundred dollars a barrel in crude oil, guys. Yeah, that's going to happen. It's at 140 right now. $5 per gallon gasoline is the average in the United States now. $7 in California. Again, someone asked about California. <laughs> no, no bueno. I mean, you got people living in tent cities now in California. I lived in California. I lived in Los Angeles. Didn't look anything like it looks like right now. Uh, but from an investing perspective, stay away. Stay away. But yeah, the price of oil um, and of course... U.S. Uh, has now banned Russian oil officially. We knew it was coming today. Earlier this morning, it was rumored. It was uh, reported. Now it's happened, guys. So now we could see $300 a barrel for, for oil. That means we could be seeing you know, $9, $10 a gallon for gas. I remember when I had a gas car. Never again. Never again. 
And Alicia, occasionally we build fourplexes. Yeah, it's just um, once you go larger on properties, the tenants tend to not stay as long. So the reason I love single families and duplexes, and that's what our team builds, is because they're big and they're like this, the duplexes are like single families. So they feel big, big rooms, vaulted ceilings. You know, it's Texas. You got space, you know, and tenants, because we're in the best school districts, they stay forever. They stay so long. So, uh, we have the land available. So to do four plexes, then you get smaller units. Tenants don't stay as long because it's more transient. You know, at the end of the day, people want to live in a single family home. People want their own space. They want their own yard. They don't want to hear neighbors through a wall. Um, and that's the benefit of having like those large duplexes. And the way we design the duplexes, I'll show you here on the screen is that the garages are side by side. So, Unless both families are hanging out in the garage making noise, they're not going to hear each other. Um, and let me show you, like, that's one of the benefits of, of that design um, is exactly that reason. Garage to garage. Um, and big, big rooms, you know, vaulted ceilings, etc. cetera. So, um, you know, that's one of the benefits of that type of uh, construction. Striper says, I like this. I like your thoughts on this, Striper. Good, good point here. Uh, let's see. Where, let me scroll down and pull it up here. Yeah. Striper says, like I told my wife, the price of our properties are not dependent on what is going on in Russia and Ukraine or if someone sneezes wrong, like COVID, right? That's why I prefer real estate over equities. 100%. 100%. I mean, look, you know, having equities as like 10% of your portfolio and maybe you have a few long-term plays like, Hey, you know, like I invest in Apple, right? There's certain companies like Tesla that I invest in. Um, there's certain long-term plays that I invest in that are small part of my portfolio. Uh, great. And then there are those speculative plays that I, I invest in some smaller term, like OTC, smaller stocks that I invest in that I put, you know, I put a few thousand in because I think that it could explode just speculation. That's not my like family's future, right? But what is my family's future is legacy wealth, which is protected by real estate investing because of exactly that reason, Striper, for that very reason right there. It's, it's, it's wealth preservation. You know, it's passive income, yes, but it's wealth preservation. Real estate has always historically been a hedge against inflation, okay? On top of it, it's been protected through wars, through famines. Uh, and so there's a long 4,000 years of history with real estate investing and gold and silver. Like those really are the, the bulwarks of, of investing. And during times of craziness, you come back to those things, right? Always. They always return to these things. 100%. Heyman, let me just see if I can answer that before we wrap up here. Um, Payment says, when you pick places to invest, what is your most important factor to consider for you? Well, as I mentioned here, it's not just one factor. To me, there are so many. And I've done full videos on what we look for in our rental markets. That's why I say, if you're going to go off and do this yourself, good luck. And I don't mean that to be snappy or flippant, but we have a whole team that does this and we're looking at crime rate. We're looking at school districts. We're looking at growth rate of jobs. And our goal is to be two to three years ahead of the curve on it. So like where we are in West Texas, we were about four years ahead of where things were moving. So we saw ahead of time what was happening, the moves there, the demographic moves, the businesses that were moving there, those things we saw four years ahead of time. That's what we do. So we're looking at all of those things from crime rates dropping to jobs growing to appreciation stable and growing, uh, vacancy rates low, uh, property management teams been in business for over five years or more. Um, uh, did I mention crime, uh, school district scores? Um, local politics, what is happening with highways being built, those things we're analyzing, what is happening with the landlord friendliness of the state, all of these things in one 
So not I, payment. There's really not one of those things that is more important to me than anything else. I mean, yes, cash on cash return or internal rate of return is probably going to is ultimately maybe the one formula that sums it all up. IRR internal rate of return. So if we could sum up all of those things, they all factor in to that one formula, that one math formula, an internal rate of return. So we have a full video on internal rate of return. I'm, I'm giving a lot of videos out to you today. We'll have links in the description after this is done. Kelly, if we can stick a bunch of these links in the description afterwards, go to the description of this video and you'll see us mentioning um, internal rate of return so you can check that out as well. Yeah, nickel, 240%. Unbelievable, Don. Exactly. Yeah, new freeways in Lubbock. Exactly. So the thing is, we knew they were being built ahead of time. Before we started investing there. Before we started buying the land. We knew that the highways were being built <laughs> ahead of time. So again, that's what our team does. Um, and they're fantastic at it. So book a call with our team today. We'll be happy to walk you through the process, teach you what we know, set you on the right path. You know, hey, maybe we can't work with you yet for two more years. You're not ready yet. That's great. That's fine. That's great. We don't care. Like, we'll be there in two years. But in the meantime, we're going to help you prepare. So two years from now, you're ready to go. And in that two years, we're going to give you a roadmap of things to do in order to prepare for it. So again, totally free. Just come over to our website, morrisinvest.com. Uh, click on the book a call button here. Right there, very, it's very simple. And you come to our front page of our of Morris Invest, there's book a call button, click it, put it on your calendar, and we'll jump on the phone with you. In the meantime, guys, check out all of the resources that we have here on the channel. Okay, there's a lot of stuff we cover. I mean, everything from lowering your taxes to funding to financing to self-directed IRAs, everything. All of it is right here on our website. Just come here and click on the blog page and you can read all about it. Go through these articles, study what, what our team puts in place here. Uh, we put a lot of work into giving you resources that you can learn about um, and, uh, and take things to the next level. Build your financial education right here. So we put a lot of work into that. All right, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Uh, drop me any comments or questions you have below. Either myself or the other team members will be able to answer it here for you right here in the YouTube channel. So please drop any comments below. I'm going to go uh, watch the Apple event because that's what I do. This is like my once a quarter. I like to sit down, um, have a cocktail and watch the Apple event and see what uh, new Apple stuff is going to be announced today. I'm excited. I want I'm looking for a new iMac possibly for the studio, maybe a Mac mini. I don't know. I got to think about the configuration, maybe a new cinema display that works with a new. I'm hoping they release a new display, a new consumer level display that's not their ridiculously priced XDR display for professionals. I want like a, I want like two of them for my investing on the screens and all of that. I, that's what I want. Anyway, it's my dream. Yeah, it's my Christmas. All right, guys, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you next week. We're here every Tuesday at noon Eastern time. So we'll see you next week, everyone. Bye now.